I'm in the process of repairing and restoring an ADM3 dumb terminal but unfortunately the mains transformer out of it is wound for 115 volt operation so these transformers are not tapped they are uh, just single supply and uh, this one is um, designed for use at 115 volts but I'm in the UK and we have a nominal 230 volt supply so I can't use this directly on the mains. I could of course use a drop down transformer but it's a bit of a pain having to uh, dig out a drop down transformer every time I want to use the terminal. So I've decided to rewind this and that's what I'll be doing in this video. I'm not going to show every single step, I'll just show some of the key steps and uh, how this look as I progress through the process. So it's a single um, winding primary and the secondaries, uh, there are three secondaries. We've got a uh, nominal 20 volts, a uh, 9.5 volts, and a uh, naught um, plus minus 15 volts or 16 volts. And so that's what I'll be rewinding. It's not a particularly big transformer, but it has got some interesting features. Um, most notably, you can see this um, screen around the outside and uh, I will need to refit that. It's also got a screen around uh, the outer of the laminations as well. I'll need to refit this. This sits directly underneath a CRT. So if I don't refit these, I could be in danger of causing some distortion and noise uh, on the CRT or on the uh, logic supply board, which again sits directly above this. So I'll have to refit this. Um, there is quite a lot of space between the core and the inside of the uh, laminations so I could fit side cheeks to the core if I want to. I'll look at that later on once I've got the core dismantled. But the first step and what, the step that's normally most difficult in rewinding a transformer like this is getting the laminations out. So when these are wound, the core's wound and then the laminations are slid in but then the whole thing is dipped in some kind of um, usually varnish something like that and that impregnates all the laminations and it bonds them together fairly effectively so getting especially the first few out can be very difficult you'll notice here there is a wedge so um, normally the uh, there is some slack in the core if we can get the wedge out then um, hopefully we can free up the first uh, lamination or two and then get the whole thing separated. Additional difficulty with this core or this transformer is the screen around it is soldered and uh, although in itself that shouldn't be that difficult to separate um, when it's backed by a huge uh, metal transformer it can be difficult get enough heat into it to get it to separate without damaging it and I want to retain it if I can to refit it if not I'll have to make a fresh one um, I also want to keep uh, sort of the nominal uh, way that the wires come out the same. Uh, we could put a, a terminal block on here of course but uh, I'd like to keep it as similar as possible to being original. And so um, I've taken some reference photographs, made some diagrams and the next step is to get over to the workshop and try and get this apart. Okay so that's step one complete. We've got the metal work off and uh, now starts the fun of trying to get the laminations out. Uh, so I'm going to go over to the workshop, see if I can get these out without damaging them and um, if I can then the next step will be to unwind the core. Okay that's all the laminations removed from the core. So um, it's a bit of a pain getting these out, they're all stuck together because of the uh, varnish this thing's dipped in. And um, so looking at these, um, I think these are size 3. The thing if you do take these apart is you need to be really careful with these. They're extremely soft and uh, if you distort them you'll have a real pain, a real job getting the uh, transformer back together again. So we've got the laminations out of the way. We can now turn our attention to the core. And uh, again this is impregnated so it will be uh, quite difficult to unwind. And what I like to do at this point is try to figure out what should be on here, then I can double check 
the calculations and uh, wind count against what I expect. Now of course I don't know exactly what the core material is. It does seem uh, very soft so I've got a feeling that um, the flux will be slightly above uh, one um, but we'll for the sake of argument uh, use a value of one for some rough calculations. We can then check the calculations against what we find when we start unwinding the core and that will just um, confirm that when we rewind it that uh, we've got this right. As I do that I'll count the first few turns that I take off to make sure they do tie up and uh, as I dismantle this I won't show you the whole thing it'll take quite a while but as I uh, dismantle this I'll uh, show you a few of the, the key steps and um, in particular we'll have a look at how the wires are terminated. Okay with the outer cover removed we can see how the wires were terminated very simple arrangement on this transformer all the wires were just um, left um, poking out of the side of the winding as they were wound and at the end a thick layer of insulation was put on, a big, uh, very thick plastic layer uh, and then the wires were um, soldered to some uh, terminating wires and then the whole thing was just taped down to the core. So I may reproduce it uh, exactly like this. It's, it's fine, as long as we use sensible ins insulation, proper transformer insulation then um, it is quite safe but it doesn't need to be very tightly bound on here to stop these um, pulling out. So you can see the way they do this is stick it down, fold them over and then that prevents um, these being pulled through and then when the whole thing's impregnated it uh, turns it into kind of a solid. Um, so I'll probably do the same thing. I may do something different at the main side. I'm not particularly happy with this arrangement but uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, but for now the next step is to start unwinding these. I'll take this next layer of insulation off and we'll uh, have a look and uh, just check in which winding this is. And here is a closer look at that arrangement. You can see there's a little uh, plastic spacer they use. This basically a plastic sheet with some holes in it to keep these separated and uh, all the wires are terminated and then folded back. I don't intend to reuse these wires so what I can do now is just cut these off Okay, and then I can reuse this, I'll clean it up, cut the ends of these leads off, push them further through and um, make fresh terminations once we get round to uh, fitting that back onto the transformer. Next step, as I said, is to start unwinding this and counting the number of turns. Okay, I've got the first winding removed and that was the 21 volt winding and it had uh, 92 turns so we now know that the turns ratio is about 4.38 turns per volt. Uh, this was actually wound as two um, side by side windings to increase the current carrying capacity. It's a more efficient way of winding. I think they were running out of space in the uh, lamination window. Um, I may do that when I rewind it. It depends on how much space I've got. Uh, the insulation I'll be using is far more efficient than this uh, old insulation so it takes up far less space so we might be able to wind that as a single winding. Uh, so we'll now we'll take off the next one and so looking at that it is right it looks like it's the first of the 16 volt windings so if we do a rough calculation and see how many turns we expect on that winding we can double check uh, our figures. So it's uh, basically the value that we worked out for the first winding so it's 4.38 and then we multiply that by the voltage we expect to see on that winding which is what I measured before I took it apart and so we should get 70 turns on the next winding so I'll start taking that off and uh, we'll see what we end up with. Okay so that did indeed have 70 turns so it looks like the calculation for the uh, winds ratio is correct. I'll double check that with the next one that should be the same so that's the second um, 16 volt winding and there should be 70 turns on that one as well so we'll just unwind that and uh, double check the count. Okay, and that was indeed another 70 turns. So that just leaves the 
9.8 volt winding so we'll just check how many turns we should have on that so again looking at our turns calculation it is 4.38 multiplied by 9.8 which is the voltage I measured on that winding so we should have 43 turns so I shall remove the final secondary and uh, count the number of turns and that then uh, actually gets us down to the bit we really want to get to which is the primary okay that's that winding removed and there was indeed 43 turns so I think we're on the right track with the turns ratio and the uh, turns per volt so now I'll just uh, take off the primary and um, we'll end up with just the core and um, I'm not going to bother counting this um, fairly confident now that we know what the uh, turns per volt is and uh, when we put it back on we'll just have to uh, adjust that for 240 volts I've been measuring the wire thicknesses as I've been taking it off and um, when I come to replace this uh, luckily all except for the um, very thick winding I can use the CNC winder for it's thin enough wire to actually uh, use the winder I'll need to make up a, an adapter for this particular core size so I'll 3D print one of those and I'll show that and um, uh, hopefully when we come to rewind it it should be a fairly simple process so I'll get this uh, primary taken off and uh, we'll see what we're left with okay I just wanted to show this before I take it apart there's uh, what appears to be a uh, a winding here that has a very thin wire it's a single layer and um, that's actually the screen that's what went to this connection and it doesn't connect to anything at the other end it's just a very thin wire that's wound around in a single layer and it acts as a, a screen between the primary and the secondary and um, I will be replacing this uh, but not using a winding I'll use uh, a layer of copper tape um, but I thought I'd show this this was an interesting way that they sometimes did this and it's, it's just to um, provide some kind of RF and uh, noise shielding between the primary and secondary it's a very well shielded transformer so uh, they really went overboard with this one um, but it's not an actual uh, winding that's um, used for anything okay so that's the primary taken off and uh, we've now got a nice collection of copper to go to the recycler and uh, this is a final sanity check um, there were 497 turns I ended up counting it, it was coming off fairly easily so I just ended up counting it as I went so if we uh, divide uh, 497 by the turns per volt that we'd calculated which is 4.38 we're getting basically 114 uh, which is close enough to the 115 volts so um, it looks like we do know the turns per volt that was on this transformer I think it's a bit higher than it needs to be and um, so I'm going to adjust that down very slightly I'll probably come down to maybe 4.5 turns per volt and uh, what I can then start doing is putting the windings back on uh, before I do that I need to make up an adapter so I can put this into the CNC winding machine if you want to try this and um, you don't have a CNC winding machine I still advise that you make up a block that's a close fit inside this you can see it's fairly badly distorted so I will need to straighten this out before I start um, but if you don't put something inside this then what will happen each time you put a turn on this there is some tension in the wire and as you put more and more turns on that overall force builds up and you end up crushing this or distorting it so you either rack it and um, then you won't be able to get the uh, uh, cores back in or you'll crush it and again you won't be able to get the cores back in so it's worth making up something to go in the uh, former before you start just to keep its uh, proper shape and dimensions otherwise you'll struggle later on and if you spend several hours rewinding a transformer it uh, is well, uh, obviously going to be very frustrating having to take it all off again okay so uh, that's it for this video I had hoped to get all this done in one video but um, as you can see it's uh, getting quite long now so I've decided to split this across two videos so in the next one we'll look at uh, getting this onto the CNC winding machine and starting to put some copper back onto this core